Hello, doers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Did you miss me? I know you did, because I missed you. And I bet you missed Shop Floor even more. In that case, I've got some good news for you. I'm back today for more Shop Floor schooling. Now, today we're going to be looking at how employees can track the amount of time they spend working on each work order. And we'll also look at an MO on the back end to see the total time spent on its work orders, as well as the cost of processing them. You see, dear viewer, time is money. I mean that quite literally in this case. You know, since we're talking about manufacturing employees getting paid for the amount of time they spend working at a work center. I need to keep track of Steve. So if you want a more granular understanding of your manufacturing costs, it's helpful to be able to see how much time, and in this case money, is being spent to manufacture each product that you produce. Now luckily, ShopFloor makes it easy to track how much you spend on each work order down to the cent. So, let's take a look how that works, and I'm watching you, Steve. Alright, before we jump into shop floor, I just want to show you how to set cost per hour for employees and work centers. Now this is important because in order to calculate how much it costs to process each work order, we need to basically know how much our work centers cost to operate, and how much we need to pay employees because we got to pay them a livable wage. It's very controversial. So we're going to take a look at employee costs first. So to do so, we're going to click on the employees app, select an employee, how about Jim Joe? Okay, so here we see the page for one of our employees, Jim Joe Kelly. Now, Jim Joe is Stealthy Woods' in-house spiritual advisor. And we also have him work the production line sometimes. Now, to see what we pay Jim Joe, we actually go into HR settings and over here at hourly costs. So, in this case, we pay Jim Joe $40 an hour. I can edit this if I want to, but it looks good for now. I also want to make a note that I have an option for a pin code up here. Now, this is basically the code that Jim Joe will be using to sign into work centers that he's at. In this case, we have it set to 1234. I think Jim Joe can remember that. All right, now let's see where we can actually set the cost for our work center. So I'm actually going to return to the main dashboard, select manufacturing, and go up to configuration and work centers. Um, in our case, I'm going to select our paint station over here. Great. Now in this cost per hour section that we have over here under the general information tab, I want to talk about something. And it's actually that I can set the hourly processing cost either per work center or per employee. Now what does each mean? Well, per work center is used to specify costs associated with operating the work center, like how much it costs to, I don't know, use a bandsaw and operate it. Per employee is used to specify how much we pay each employee per hour to work at the work center. Now, this is a blanket cost for every employee, meaning you should only use it if every employee working at the work center is paid the same amount. I should also note that the hourly cost field on the employee form and the per work center field on the work center form override the per employee field that we have right there on the actual work center form. Unless they're both set to zero dollars. So, for example, since I have the per work center cost set over here to twenty dollars, any amount I enter in the per employee field will be ignored because the per work center field takes precedence. Additionally, since Jim Joe has an hourly cost of, as you remember, forty dollars set on his employee form, the cost will be used instead of the per employee cost that we have for any work center that he works at. However, the per work center cost is not overridden by the hourly cost on an employee form. So if Jim Joe works at the paint station, his hourly cost of $40 will be added to the paint station's per work center cost of $20. This results in a total cost of $60 per hour to operate the paint station because simple math. All right, there's just one more thing I want to show you on the work center form. So here, we actually have an allowed employees field over here. And what does that basically mean? Well, I can specify which employees are allowed to use and work at this work center over here. If I leave it blank, any employee can use it. In this case, I have it set so that only Jim Joe can use the paint station. Because we don't want somebody like me painting over here. Alright, I know that was a lot of information. So I think it's time we go look at the shop floor. So here we are on the shop floor. Now on the left hand side, we have the operator panel, which shows us all the operators who are currently logged in. At this moment, I'm the only active operator. Now, I've also already created an MO for our stool product that I can use as an example. So I'm just going to search for the product up here, and it happens to be the number 80, just so I can focus on it. All right. Now, I'm going to click on the assembly line button, which takes me over here to the first work order for the MO, which happens to be assembling the stool. To get started on it, I'll just click on the header of the card, and you'll notice once I do, a timer appears on the work order, showing the total amount of time it's been worked on by every employee. Now next to my name up here on the operator panel, another timer appears. And this one shows the amount of time that I personally have spent working during this work session. Now this timer counts in increments of minutes, so it's going to stay at zero until a minute has passed. Alright, 
Let's say that we finished assembling the stool, which means it's time to close the work order. To do that, all I actually have to do is hit mark is done. And then after I do that, some cool magic happens. Now, the next work order happens to be painting the stool. And we have to wait for this to fully disappear because what's going to happen is it's going to move over to the paint station. And that's actually the work center that we need to access. And we can access it just by clicking on the word paint station up here. And oh my god, oh doopsie, oh no. The work order is grayed out. <sighs> And I can't interact with it at all. I guess we're just gonna have to give up on manufacturing this stool. Just kidding. Oh my god, I remembered something. Remember how we made it so that Jim Joe is the only employee who is allowed to use the paint station? Well, since I'm currently signed in as myself as Jose, I can't work on this or interact with work orders at this work center. So to process this order, Jim Joe will have to sign into the shop floor module and complete it himself. So to do so, he actually just needs to click on Add Operator down here, select himself, and oh no, again, we need his pin, his very difficult pin. And boom, would you look at that, O'Doers. I can now basically work on this, and it's no longer grayed out, and Jim Joe can process it. So to do so, he's going to click on the header, starts the timer again, and then he finished painting at light speed, so he can close production since he is done. Now, since this is the final work order for the MO, both the MO and work order are closed. So, so far we've seen how to set up costs for work centers and employees, and how to sign into the shop floor app to record the amount of time spent on work orders. But how do you see the statistics for the total cost of processing each work order, or even the total time spent working on them? Well, it's really hard. Just kidding, it's super simple. I can actually see all of that from the manufacturing order. So let's take a look at that now. To start, we're going to return out of here by hitting close, and we're going to go into the manufacturing app. And you guessed it, operations and manufacturing orders. Go ahead, and at this point, oh no, would you look at that? We can't select ours because it's been closed. So we're going to take away this filter and go find it. There we have it. Now I want you to make your way over to the work orders tab over here. All right. Now here, I can actually see the total time spent working on each work order in the real duration column that we have over there. If I want to see work order costs, I just need to select the overview smart button up here at the top. And boom, it gives us all of that over here. Now the operations section that we have right here on this page, it basically lists the cost of each work order in the MO cost column that we have over here. The time spent on each work order is also available on this page in the quantity column that we have over there as well. And there you have it, O-Doers. We covered quite a lot in today's lesson. You should now know how to record and view the time spent working on individual work orders. You should also be able to easily find the processing cost of each work order. That's it for today, folks. See you next time.